Hi, I'm Colleen Campbell from UCSD Emergency Medicine, and today I'm going to briefly talk about the kidneys and the POCUS exam for the kidneys. So when we look at the kidney, we always find it next to the spleen or the liver, and there's many things that we can discover about it, but the first thing we do is we kind of take a global look at where it lives, and then we notice things around it like the liver and here we notice an extra area of hypoechoic fluid and this person actually had a perinephric hematoma from an MVA. So down to the basics, why would we look at the kidneys with a bedside ultrasound? And the main reasons are, do they have a renal stone? Do they have hydronephrosis, which we would see better than a renal stone? Do they have flank or abdominal pain or possibly hematuria? Is their bladder draining? Do they have a bladder obstruction? Is the Foley catheter in the right place? These are all reasons why we would take a look at the kidneys with bedside ultrasound. So we know that if we suspect a kidney stone, we also should at least think about the aorta for a moment. And if you have any suspicion for an abdominal aortic aneurysm, please do that exam first before you look at the kidney. We know that if we find the kidney and we do not see any hydronephrosis, that does not exclude a renal stone. To do this exam, we would use the curvilinear or phased array probe, and we could either put the patient in a lateral decubitus position in the posterior axillary line and look at the kidney in short and long axis, or like in these photos, we can rest our hand on the bed, put the marker dot up towards the head, and fan posterior to evaluate the kidney. We can also use color flow to differentiate renal vessels from hydronephrosis. So how good is ultrasound versus CAT scan for evaluation of renal stones? Well, we know that for first time evaluation of hematuria or flank pain with no history of stones, we wanna do a CAT scan to evaluate for masses or other pathology. We know that if we see hydronephrosis on our bedside ultrasound, that has a positive predictive value of 88% for renal stones. If we don't see hydronephrosis, that negative predictive value is only 65%. So it does not mean that stones are not present if we see no hydronephrosis. But if we concentrate on the stones that cause more problems that are greater than five millimeters and tend to need more interventions, that negative predictive value does go up to 89%. So let's start with the anatomy of the kidney. The normal kidney is nine centimeters by four centimeters. The medulla is hyperechoic and the outer cortex is hypo echoic, especially compared to the liver and the spleen. The kidney is surrounded by gerotus fascia, and in a healthy, normal kidney, it will be hypoechoic compared to the liver and spleen. And the reason why I repeat that is because it's important to look at every time you look at a kidney, compare it to the liver and the spleen. So, here we see an ultrasound of the kidney, and again we see a hypoechoic cortex, and the medulla is the inner portion, and that is hyperechoic, and here we see calyces. In chronic kidney disease, the entire kidney will appear brighter and scarred down. So degrees of hydronephrosis. We start from very mild degrees of hydronephrosis on the left-hand side of the screen to more moderate but still preservation of normal kidney architecture in the middle of the screen. 
And then with severe hydronephrosis, we will lose all normal architecture of the kidney. So here is an example of a normal kidney. We have a nice cortex. We have the medulla with a collecting system here, and the ureter would come out here. Now this kidney, we still see the cortex, and we see a little bit more fullness in the medulla or the collecting system of the kidney here, and we see more fluid. With moderate hydronephrosis, we really see dilation of the ureter, and we see more of a bear claw appearance of the medulla. Now also, this is superior and this is inferior. We see this anechoic thin-walled structure on the inferior aspect of the kidney, which represents a large renal cyst. Here is an example of a kidney which is much worse off. We can really barely recognize it as a kidney at all and it's mostly fluid filled and this is severe hydroureter and severe hydronephrosis with very little normal kidney remaining. This is an example of a staghorn calculus or a very large stone within the kidney and we can see all the shadowing coming down into the area where the ureter lives, and that's from the calcified staghorn calculus in the kidney. This is yet another example of a renal cyst. This one is superior in location, and it's very thin-walled. Polycystic kidney disease also can distort the architecture of the normal kidney and its advanced stages. So here we see a bright kidney with scarring. So again, that's gonna mean chronic kidney disease and multiple cysts, some with internal echoes and some simpler small cysts. And this is significant for polycystic kidney disease. This is a very bright kidney surrounded by fluid we only see the tip here of a solid organ, and this would be a sign of a kidney which is not working. It is scarred down and not functioning at all. This is one more example of an atrophic kidney here. The kidney is so tiny, it has no function. It's hyperechoic compared to the spleen, and there is fluid surrounding the, the spleen as well. This is a perfect example of why sh we should always look around. The kidney itself here doesn't look bad right here, but above that we see this mass, and this is a very large adrenal mass, and oftentimes that is due to metastatic disease. So always look at the kidney architecture, but always take a look around the kidney to see if anything is there that should not be there. This is an example of a mass here compressing upward on the kidney. And you can see that the kidney structure is changed because of this mass compressing where the ureter comes out. And we see some dilation in the medulla of the kidney due to this mass compressing. This is a kidney laceration, and this is why it's important to remember that we're not that good at seeing solid organ injury with bedside ultrasound, and this is why we should rely on a CAT scan for anyone who we suspect a kidney laceration on. This is actually a kidney laceration diagnosed by CT. This is how difficult it is to see by ultrasound. So again, we're going to do a CAT scan for this. This is the bladder, and here we see the internal iliac artery and vein, and over here we see a dilated ureter. So that's a distal hydroureter. In this example, we see the bladder and we see this epithelial thickening in the bladder wall, and then we see this fluid here 
right as the ureter enters into the bladder, and that's also hydroureter at the point of entry into the bladder. Now, some people go to extremes on their bedside ultrasound, and this is a funny example of that because somebody actually was complaining of penile pain, and so they whipped out their trusty bedside ultrasound, and they actually caught a kidney stone in exit. So this kidney stone is actually in the penis exiting out of the body at this time. Now, I really don't expect you to go to that extreme with your bedside ultrasound, and I want to thank you for your time. I just want to sum up by reminding you to you can roll people on their side to optimize your view of the kidney. You will do the aortic exam first. If you have any inclination that this person might have an abdominal aortic aneurysm, we will fan in between the ribs to get rid of rib shadow when we're doing the kidney exam. You can rest your hand on the bed when you are scanning a patient who is lying supine. Remember to keep your marker dot up at first. Look around the kidney for any other masses which may be there. Always compare both sides and always look at the bladder. Thank you very much for your time today and happy scanning.